Welcome to the teaching ministry of Reverend JFK Mensa, a seasoned Bible teacher with over 40 years of ministry experience. He is a pastor, a church planter, a missionary, and an international conference speaker. He is passionate about making Christ like disciples worldwide. JFK Mensa is the general overseer of Great Commission Church International. May you be transformed as you listen to the Word of God. I want you to tell God, I want you to unlimit my mind. That's all I want you to do for me. Unlimit my mind. Just tell him, Unlimit my mind. Unlimit my mind. And limit my mind in Jesus' name. Amen. Today, my work is not so easy because by nature, the human mind is limited. By nature, the human mind is limited. It's limited because we are made of dust. God made us out of dust. Genesis 2, 7. We are limited because we die. We have a day we are born. We have a day we grow. We have a day we die. We are limited because we don't know anything until we learn. And when we learn, we forget. And when we forget, at the end of the day, we see how much we don't know. We are limited because we are forced to be at one place at a time. We are localized. We are limited because our power is small. So today, I am interested in doing three things. Carry them home. Spend time on them until they become yours. Number one, I call it the new creation mindset. I will explain it. Number two, the growth mindset. Number three, the Bible spirit-filled Christ-centered mindset. So, first of all, let's look at the theme verse. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. Ephesians chapter 3, we're reading at verse 20. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think or imagine the God we are serving has no time Psalm 90 verse 2 
says that before the mountains were born, from everlasting to everlasting, you are. Before God. the mountains were brought forth, yes, or ever you had formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. From everlasting to everlasting, you are God. Second Peter three eight puts it better. He says that. But beloved, do not forget this one thing, that with the Lord one day is as a thousand years. One day is before God one thousand years. And a thousand years. And a thousand years. As one day. As one day. You see, you are working with a God who can do for you in one day what will take you, a human being, one thousand years. You can't do it, but he can do it for you in one day. I like Joseph. He was in prison. Condemned because you are chasing your master's wife and he is in charge of the prison. When will you come out? Life imprisonment. In one day, they said, Pharaoh is searching for you. They bathed him, changed his prison clothes, shaved him, brought him before Pharaoh. He interpreted the dream. They made him prime minister for the whole Egypt. They gave him a chariot. They gave him a wife. They gave him a house. He became mentor for Pharaoh in one day. One day. One day. Our minds cannot get it. That what you are searching for in life, all your life, God can give it to you in one day. Our minds, you see, because of the way we, are, we think, we are wired. So, if you pray for one hour, you say, hey, I'm wasting time. Wasting time. Wasting time. You are before the one who can give you what you are rushing to do. He can give it to you, sleeping. But it's not only time. Let's read Isaiah 66. Verses 1 and 2. 1 and 2. That says the Lord. Yes. Heaven is my throne. Heaven is my throne. And earth is my footstool. The earth is my footstool. Where is the house that you will build me? <laughs> this is what I call immensity. You see? Heaven. You see, those who do science, right now, the closest star to us is 6.4 light years. This means the distance which light travels, 186,000 miles per second, the distance light travels in one year, 6.4 That's the closest star to us. And our earth is one of the smallest in our solar system. Made up of different planets. And our solar system is one of the smallest in the Milky Way. And the Milky Way is one of the smallest of the galaxies in the universe. What are you talking about? God says that the heaven is his throne. That's what he sits on. The earth is where he puts his leg. What about when he stands? What about when he raises his hand? Even the heaven of heavens cannot contain him. That's First Kings 8.27. You see, our mind cannot imagine a giant who is so big 
that heaven and the heaven of heavens cannot contain him. So, we try to advise God. I want to tell you about power. Many of us, even if I ask you to come and lift this pulpit, it will be trouble. Because the strength to carry it is not there. So our mind cannot imagine a man who has so much power that it cannot be measured. You see, that is what we call the infinity of God. His power knows no boundaries, no limits. His wisdom knows no limits. His size knows no limits. So our mind is caked in the small, small things and people around us. I like many stories in the Bible about limited mind. But this morning, two are the ones the Holy Spirit has placed on my heart. The first one is Caleb. Caleb. Let's read Joshua chapter 14 from verse 10. You, if you are writing, you can write from 6. But let's read from verse 10. You know, the Israelites were asked by God to go to Cana. Then they sent spies and the spies came back and said, we were like grasshoppers before them. The cities, big walls, we, we can't go. And they had all night weeping. Then a certain gentleman called Caleb with Joshua. He told the people, look, let's go. The place, I'm going to see it. But God is with us. It makes a big difference in life. Some people don't want to know the truth. I don't want to go to the hospital because I don't want them to tell me that I have asthma. I have rheumatism. You are living in a fool's paradise. Faith is not trying to believe what you know is not true. That's not faith. Faith is knowing that you have asthma. But trying to believe a God who is bigger than asthma. That's faith. Listen to him. And now behold, the Lord has kept me alive, as he said. The Lord has kept me alive, as he said. These 45 years, ever since the Lord spoke this word to Moses while Israel wandered in the wilderness. Yes. And now here I am this day, 85 years old. Here I am this day, 85 years. If you are 85 in this room, get up. If you are 85 in this room, get up. It means you haven't seen anything as yet. 70 is not the year to retire. <laughs> Who can retire you at 70? Who is he? Who can retire you at 70? Who is that? What? It's the kind of God you are working with. That's why you retire at 70. This man is 85. Listen to him. Yes. As yet, I am as strong this day as on the day that Moses sent me. I am as strong this day as on the day Moses sent me. You see, when you read the Bible, you choose what to believe. <laughs> yes. I am 85. But I'm as strong this day as I was 45 years ago. Yes. Just as my strength was then, so now, now is my strength for war, both for going out and for coming in. Can you imagine an 85-year-old person is saying my strength is like it was for going out for war and coming back. Yes, I'm still, you know, the Caleb you knew, for, I'm 85, but you, my strength, is like that. How many people speak like that? 
If you are 60, they are pensioning you from Ghana Education Service. Some people have even gone to the office to change their birthday so that they can be in the teaching service for a little longer. Shame. 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 Yeah. Yes. Now therefore. Now therefore. Give me this mountain. Give me this mountain. Give me this mountain. Give me this mountain. 85 years. I am still ready for war. Of which the Lord spoke in that day. For you heard in that day how the Anakim were there. Your mind can make you die early. Small thing, me who? A pastor came when I was in Hohoe. You know, one of our church members sells yams. And the pastor asked, How much is the yam? And she gave the price, I don't know, three for 20 cities or something. Then he said, yeah. Then we pastors, we can't eat yam again. Whenever you talk, it's your faith talking. Your faith is talking. My yeah. What does Deuteronomy 34 verse 7 say? Moses was 100 and 20 years old. Moses was 120 died. years old. His eyes were not dim. His eyes were correct. No, his natural vigor diminished. His natural vigor was there for climbing mountains. 120 years old. You read that the life expectancy for Africans is 40 years. So he said, ah, I'm 41. I'll die soon. I'm saying that our minds are limited because we are used to the way all human beings are. Our minds are limited because we are afraid of failure. You don't want to fail. So what everybody is doing, you do. You don't want to do what other people are not doing. Our minds are limited because Satan, the God of this world, 2 Corinthians 4, 4, he has blinded the minds of unbelievers. You see? So your mind is blinded. Our minds are limited because after the fall, God gave us up. Romans chapter 1, verse 28. God gave us up to a reprobate mind. A mind which doesn't think properly. Then, our minds are limited. Because Ephesians 4.18 says that. Our understanding has been darkened. Our minds are limited because 2 Corinthians 3.14 to 16 says, there is a veil covering our mind whenever we read the scriptures. The Old Testament. So, this is an old man. Let's look at the young man. David. On the day David killed Goliath, let's read the first Samuel 17. Just read from verse 33 to 35. I've talked about old people. Now let me talk about youth. David was about 17, 18 years old when he killed Goliath. First Samuel yes. 17, 33 to 35. Listen to what King Saul, the king of Israel, told David. And Saul said to David, You are not able to go against this Philistine. You are not able to go against this Philistine. To fight with him. No. For you are a youth. You are a youth. And he, a man of war from he, his youth. A man of war from his youth. Let, let's hear David's reply. Your servant used to keep his father's sheep. Your servant used to keep his father's sheep. Uh, and when a lion or a bear came yes. and took a lamb out of the flock, yes. I went out of it and struck it yes. and delivered the lamb from its mouth. Yes. And when it arose against me, 
I caught it by its beard and struck and killed it. Your servant has killed both lion and bear. And this uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them, seeing he has defied the armies of the living God. Moreover, David said, The Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear, he will deliver me from the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said to David, uh, it's, it's okay. You know, when you leave church, you are going to meet friends. You are going to meet family members. You are going to meet schoolmates, workmates, colleagues, neighbors. And they pump ideas, suggestions, and attitudes, opinions. They pump them into your mind. When you don't have a mindset, you open up and they begin to change you. When we say mindset, we mean that you have made up your mind and plastered it with concrete and nailed it with six inches nail. So that the way you think and position yourself is set. Other people can come and say anything. But when you have set, your mind does not move. Many church members come to church. They hear a lot of sermons. It's not that we are not preaching. We are preaching. We are preaching. Yes. A mindset is that you have come to a certain conclusion and, and you have put your mind into gear. So even if the king of Israel tells you don't go, you will go. You will go. You will go. I like many of the stories in the Bible. They tell you mindset. God wanted Abraham to change his mind. So, first, he took him out with Lot. Lot left. He told him to walk around. Every where he sees, he sets his foot. He will give him to him. Then, one day, Abraham told God, I don't have a child. So all this, your blessing, is my servant who is going to enjoy it. <laughs> then God said, come. 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 The stars. Yes, please. Can you count them? Count them. Can you count these stars? One, two, three. No, I can't count. I can't count. So, so will your children be. <laughs> Romans 4.17 says God calls things which are not as though they were. The thing is not there at all. He says it's there. And Genesis 15, 6 says, Abraham believed God and it was counted for him as righteousness. What is God doing? Changing his mindset. You see, instead of calling him Abraham, meaning noble father, he changed his name. He started calling him Abraham, father of many nations, when he didn't have a child at all. Because you see, the God we are working with, He calls things which are not as though they were. Jericho, the walls were still around Jericho. And He told Joshua, I have given you Jericho. That's all. So if you are working with God and your mind cannot open, you will be where you are. You will die like any man. It's not a curse. 
Yes, Matthew 9, 29. Two blind men followed Jesus. He didn't mind them. Then he got to the house and they came. Then he asked them, do you believe I can do it? Do you believe I can make you see? They said yes. Then he put his hand on their eyes and said, according to your faith, be it unto you. Not my faith, your faith. And they saw. The father who had the epileptic child, he said from the childhood, this boy has been suffering. Epilepsy will throw him into fire, throw him into water to kill him. So I, Papa, I beg you. I beg you if you can do anything about the matter, help us. Then Jesus said in Mark 9, 23, me, me do something about it. No, it's you. It's you. If you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. If you can open your mind, if you can open your mind, that's it. That's it. Hey, as for my family, they die at 50. You will die at 50. <laughs> but, have you ever read Genesis seventeen seventeen? When God told Abraham that Sarah, your wife, will give you a child. The Bible says Abraham laughed. Normally we think it's only Sarah who laughed. It's not true. Listen to it. Genesis seventeen seventeen. Yes. Then Abraham fell on his face and laughed. Abraham. Abraham. The one we all praise. He fell on his face and laughed. <laughs> and said in his heart. Yes. Shall a child be born to a man who is 100 years old? Limit. 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 Shall a child be born to a man who is 100 years old? Limit. And shall Sarah, who is 90 years old, bear a child? The answer is yes. <laughs> a hundred year old man can have children. Not only that, after 23 years, Sarah died. Abraham married a new woman and had children. Even after 120 years, he still had children. That is the God we serve. Who says you cannot have children? When we live here, go and write down all the things you want God to do for you. Otherwise, you are not dying. Yes. I have told God that if I'm not like Jesus on this earth, I'm not dying. I'm not going anywhere. I'm here. Yes. I've told him that if every boy, every girl in the last village of the world does not hear the gospel of Jesus, I won't die. I'm not going anywhere. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. I've told him that if we don't plant churches within walking distance of every human being on this earth, I'm not dying. I'm there. I'm there. I'm walking. I've told him that making disciples who make disciples. If every human being who is a Christian is not discipled, I'm not, I'm not interested in car, house, land. What is that? I never pray for it. This is my wife. I never, in my whole life, never pray for car, land, building. I, I wouldn't pray for it. But I ask certain things from God. Let me be like Jesus before I die. If not, Keep me alive. I want to keep on fighting until I'm like Jesus. That is what I want. That's what I want. You know, I'm not saying those things are bad. Proverbs 30, 7 to 9. Somebody said two things I want from God. Give them to me before I die. Don't make me poor or rich. Because when I'm rich, I will deny you. When I'm poor, I will steal and curse you. And make sure I don't tell lies. Those are the two things I want from you before I die. You too can tell God what you want before you die. After all, prayer is prayer. Prayer is prayer. You have opportunity to pray just like Elijah. He was a man like you. 
And he prayed earnestly that he shouldn't read three and a half years. And he didn't read. Then he prayed again and he trained. You are alone. Your prayer is your destiny. I agree that we should not force God's hands. But that's because God cannot be forced. God cannot be forced. He cannot be coerced. He cannot be bribed. He cannot be bought. He is your father. If you ask him something and he doesn't like it, he won't give it to you. And that is his answer. So like your small boy is four years and he said, Mommy, buy a bicycle for me, my birthday. He said, No, you are too young. He said, Mommy, 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 So you buy bicycle. You don't buy bicycle. You see, God loves us, but he doesn't approve everything you are doing or asking. So he tells you, he's a disciplinarian. So I'm never afraid of prayer. If I pray, he tells he says he doesn't like it. He should tell me like Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. He said, God, this cross, ah! and The father said, you must go. You must go. This cross, now, now. And he went. Moses said, oh, I want to see Kenya. He said, you go. Three times. He said, don't talk about this again. Finish. David, eh, his son was sick. He laid on the floor, fasted seven days. God said, no, no, this boy will die. Seventh day, the boy died. Seventh day of the fast. You can't force God. But you can ask in his will. Ha. Ah. Yeah. So, the new creation mind is that because you have been bought by Jesus, because he chose you in Christ before the foundation of the world, because you have been blessed by every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ, because you were made alive together with Christ, you were raised together with Christ. You are seated together with Christ in the heavenly places. Because you are God's workmanship, Ephesians 2.10, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which he prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Because that, that's what we call the new creation mind. And I say it's a mindset because... You can still live like any ordinary person. Even though those promises are in the Bible. This is a painful one. But allow me to give it. One of our pastor friends got married. It's an old testimony. It's about 10 years now. Oh, 10? It's more. Then, for his honeymoon... A friend paid for the hotel so that they would go and enjoy. And when they went, the hotel was top level. The bed, the, everything was like this. But the food was so expensive. So they were going outside to buy gari and kinky to eat. And by the end of the one week, they didn't have enough money, so they left. When they met their friend, the friend said, oh, how did you find the hotel? They said, oh, the hotel is good, but the food is expensive. And the friend said, I paid for the food, morning, afternoon, evening. I paid every day, Monday to Sunday, I paid for the food for you. Many Christians are like that. Heaven has paid through the blood of Jesus for a lot of things which you are not enjoying. Heaven has paid. They paid with the blood of the Son of God for you. So, you need a new creation mentality. People ask me why I memorize the Bible. I don't memorize the Bible to win Bible quiz competition. I don't even call it memorizing the Bible. 
I engage the Bible verses. When I'm preaching, the things I'm saying are from my stomach. They are not from my head. They are verses I have taken time to swallow, vomit, swallow again, chew, vomit. Some verses, I have quiet time on them like 10, 15 times. There are some chapters in the Bible I've read over 100 times. Why? The Bible verses are not children's Sunday school recitation. They are promises of God bought by the blood of Jesus. And we read it this morning that God swore to Abraham. Why? Because human beings, they doubt. So even though he is God, he doesn't lie. He swore so that you respect what he is saying. But we don't mind. Many Christians don't mind Bible verses. They don't think that their mind should be used to memorize Bible verses and engage the Bible verse. They believe rather that they should use their mind to know the phone numbers of politicians. You know, so that you can, yes, and, you know, people contacts. Yeah. Oh, does it end with 81? Then it's my friend. Let me quickly rush through the second. Growth mindset. A growth mindset means that make allowance in your life to grow. Second Peter 3.18 says, grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Grow. Grow. Second Peter chapter 3 verse 18. But grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Grow! Grow! Luke 2.52 says, Jesus grew. Jesus increased in wisdom, in stature, in favor with God and with man. Second Corinthians 3.18 says, We all, with unveiled face, beholding us in the mirror, the glory of the Lord, we are being transformed, being changed into the same image of Jesus from one degree of glory to another by the Spirit. Grow. Growth mindset is like, hey, you a woman too, you want to be an architect? Hey, a woman, you want to do mathematics? You see, it's a mindset. I had a certain church member. Some of you sitting here know him. He was a typist at the University of Ghana. And he was using his typewriter. Pete, 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 pete. Then computer came. And we said, brother, won't you learn computer? He said, me? No. No. What happened is, after some time, the typewriter pete, pete, has... Have you ever seen one before? <laughs> typewriter is no more. Go to post office today and see. When we're in sixth form, we're using slide rule. Have you seen slide rule again? Research. Some of the biggest Swiss watch manufacturers, when electronics watch came, they didn't want to do it. Now they have closed down. <laughs> Life is growing. If you won't grow, it will pass by you. Yesterday I taught my cell group leaders how to use the internet and WhatsApp to be a cell group leader. Because if we invite people for prayer meeting here in church on Wednesdays, how many people come? How many people come prayer meeting here in the chapel on Wednesday? Thank you. <laughs> but when we use WhatsApp and go online, we are able to get sometimes 30, 25 people praying online. The world is changing. You had better change your mind. You better grow. Yesterday, uh -huh, my cell group leaders are here. When we had our cell group meeting for cell group leaders, 
online. Do you know what happened? A woman from the United States joined us. So when we finished, I said, oh, sister, you like our church? She said, yes. I said, we are accepting you as church members. She said, I will be very happy. Then I said, you will start a cell group in the U.S. She said, yo. Some people, even Christians, their mind is set. I even heard somebody preaching that. All people who come to church with mobile phone and not the real Bible. It's a sin. Is that Bible? <laughs> you continue. <laughs> continue with that type of sermon. When I say Bible, I mean the Bible, King James Version. Continue. You see, the world is changing. So crusade, when there is a crusade now, how many diplomats and graduates from the university will come to a crusade and sit down and be born again? No, tell us the truth. Nobody. House to house. I taught my people how to do house to house. We go house to house. Come to my area to do house to house. All the houses are walled. Gated. Somebody has even written on the gate that this is my email. If you need me, write to my email. I have a gun. I have a gun. So, house to house, those things, now the world is changing. You need a growth mindset. You see, you need a growth mindset. As a Christian, you must be growing. And there are courses online, things you can do to help yourself. You learn, you can even ask your own child to teach you how to use WhatsApp, how to use, you know, WhatsApp conference call, how to, you can learn. You are not too old to learn. Why has God given you this? Moses was 120. His eyes were not dimmed. His natural force was there. Joshua is saying, I'm 85. Give me this mountain. You, you are 70. You can't learn computer. You can't learn computer. You can't learn internet. You will die. <laughs> yes. Ask my wife. When we went to the UK, look, train station. The trains come, shock. He said, two o'clock, the train is there. If you don't enter, it's gone. And you are not going to ask anybody, please, where's the train to Leeds? Where's the train to... No. Everybody is just going. Then you are looking on the notice board, you check, it's going. Twelve, five, is the plane is departing. Okay, then they go, there's a place to stand. All the things are written. If you won't learn, stay. <laughs> stay. Stay. You see? And we all grow. The first time I was in the aeroplane, when they said, take off, you tighten your seatbelt, the plane makes boo boo. And they say, yes, we are about to land. Yes, yes, we are landing now. Hey, please, tighten your seatbelt and everybody, uh, get ready to uh, go back to your seat. Uh, then you are holding this. Then you hear, you hear, boo 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 You say, Jesus, 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 Jesus. After being in the plane for over 50 times, now when I enter the plane, I sit down, I cross my leg, I, I'm, reading, I'm reading my newspaper or Bible, and I take off. It's landing, you just, you know, fold yourself, and you land, and that's it. The first time I went to University of Ghana, what? Some girl said, Ligon. 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 And I wanted to board Trotro, Tabo, Bone Shaker. And one of the girls came, said, JFK, what are you doing? You must know that you are in the university now. Why are you boarding Bone Shaker? First year, you greet everybody. The eight. Second year, 
I walk like this. <laughs> you see? Life is like that. The spiritual realm demands growth. Why do I have to beg my church members to send the next youth leader to Bible college? Your youth leader has never gone to Bible college. Who is the youth leader? Where is he sending the church? Your women's leader has never been trained, but you voted for her as women's leader. Why is she taking the church? Why is she taking the church? Have you ever heard before that a doctor has not been trained, but he's injecting people? A driver has not been trained, he's driving. Have you heard it before? But in this church, there are people who are not growing, but they are the leaders. How? And my last point, I don't want to develop it. It's a spirit-filled, Bible-centered, Christ-like mindset. Look, let me tell you. When I saw the, the youth dancing in church, what? What are you talking about? You see JFK, yes, Pastor Mills, a I am not PMK at the front. And then when we go, these days, we come to church, we sit. <laughs> Life is going. You are not coming here to stay. The wisdom of God is that your mind should be unlimited to go beyond this world. Ecclesiastes 3.11 says, God has put eternity in our hearts. Look, I'm not making mouth. But I can tell you that when Matthew 6.33 says, if you seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, he will add all things to you. I am a living proof. Even if I die today, I say to the glory of God that I entered this world with bare hands. I have served God with my whole life. My strength as a human being. My time. My talents. Everything he has given me, I have tried to use to serve him. He has not left me. He has been faithful. Three mindsets. New creation mindset. Growth mindset. A mind which is set on spirit-filled Christ-likeness. God bless you. Oh, I can see the love in your... Follow JFK Men's Ministries on Facebook and YouTube and invite others to listen to his podcast. You can also access some of JFK Mensa's books and keep up with his ministry at www.jfkmensaministries.org. God bless you.